hey welcome back again to another video it's your baby girl the surest immigration blog that gives you 98 percent information and the main to present what is your village people i know if you know say you know get any village where they follow you so that means that's 100 percent but then as i still say disclaimer i am not an immigration expert or anything i share my experience according to i want to show you where i share videos based on my experience my research and you know so make sure to verify with all the authorities that you know before you take my advice i did not see anything anyways welcome back again to another video and of course you know what you're watching now chapter with Ashidemi, means where we share immigration means facts truths advice common sense culture Cut see everything that's what we share for this channel. So on today's video, now I don't bring on that big for you guys that you might be wondering or you don't really have so many ideas, or maybe you've seen ad ad ideas, but you people know me when I come here, I come here with a word, I come here with a bank, and in that view, whether you've seen it elsewhere, whether you've heard, it, whether you've had it in mind, when I come, when I talk, you say me, I'd like to analyze it. And again, under disclaimer, the way I'm looking at this video and the list I want to talk about, it'd be like I said, this video is gonna be a long one, you know. So make sure you're relaxed. Make sure you even if, if you can't listen now, you can just take some time, do whatever you want to do and come back to hear me. Because if you feel like it's, my video is not that that you can watch in a hurry, go possible because you will be we will be intrigue in fact they call me queen of audience retention you know looking at me from there you be like who is this girl talking to they call me queen of audience retention jerry i'll pick your attention from the beginning to the end you don't have option the only time that you click out of my video is if your battery go low and even if it go low go you know see you just use power bank anyways let's dive right into it so guys i'll be telling you 16 ways you can actually avoid paying child care in the uk or abroad 16 ways, 16 legal ways, 16 legal ways that you can actually avoid paying child care. Before I dive right into it, let me tell you some short introduction. I actually have a video that I made. I'll put in the link in the description box. So I made a special playlist for mothers, fathers, or parents. I just titled it parent. So if you know you're a parent, single mother, double mother, you shall have child, whether male or female, shall, and you're trying to relocate abroad, make sure to check the playlist. I'll be putting the link in my description box. So make sure to click it and check for any other subsequent videos. Like I have some videos that target only parents, only mothers, only fathers and everything. So just scan through the title and see anyone that befits you. So this one, even when I say something, something in UK, just know that I'm talking about general abroad, whether you are going to UK or anything. Uh -huh. So most of these countries have similar similar child rule, child care, blah, 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 and everything. So far, today we're talking about six ways you can actually avoid paying child care benefits. So the first on our list, before we talk about the first on our list, um, like I said, I made a video earlier about 20 things you should not do when you're relocating abroad. There are things that there's this group of people that actually call social welfare outside the country. They have it in every other country outside Nigeria. They have it in Nigeria, safe. Yeah, they have it in Nigeria. I've seen a situation whereby maybe they will see a woman on the street that is depressed and they feel like they can't take care of the child. They'll take that child from her and everything. But at least, you know, the Nigerians, we are still sympathetic. You resist her, give her in child now, they go give her. But, but there is nothing like that. So you have to know something. So make sure to watch that video before watching this one. So one of those rules is do um any child that is less than 12, you must not leave them alone in the house unattended to. And even if you actually leave any child that is actually 12 years old in the house unattended to, what are you supposed to do? You have to make sure that you don't leave them alone for a very long time. Maybe you just leave them to just go and do something and then come back. You don't have to leave them alone for a long time. Because if you leave them alone and those social people, those children welfare people, don't back home, they are going to take that child for away from you. And the only thing you just be saying is over oh, revoir. The way we to train this child, since you don't know how to train child, they will help you. So whether you brought your child from Nigeria, whether you brought your child from Ghana, whether you brought it from Cameroon, it is nobody's business. As long as the child is inside UK, those people, eh, abroad people, they love children so much. I made an another video about poverty list or abroad poverty list, people that are most important. They love children so, so much. And I said it in that video, like, from the moment you are entering UK, entering Canada or entering any country, 
the best thing that will come to your mind is these people they are looking for a way to take your child for away from you so anyway they call social child welfare run away from them their motive is to take that child away from because they love children so much in fact it's their joy to always have children they are distant so you have to be careful so having known this that's for you to know the importance of child care the importance of taking or giving good attention to your child because if you don't they will take your child away from you i know <laughs> especially if you don't give birth to that child in the uk or in that country, you'll be like ah, ah. now now i'm not picking for there's nothing like that though as long as it's inside our country they will take that child from me so now um, I'm talking about six points of how you and we all know how expensive child care is. So ways of having child care, you have child minder taking them to school and then nanny. We know how very expensive this work is, right? Imagine you doing a ten pounds per hour work and then you have to pay child care and everything. How much did they have? So that means whatever you are giving it back just because of your child. Yeah, we understand we into your more Yeah, we understand that you actually suffer. Because of your child, but then now no means say more our pocket come on dry now. You don't understand, you don't understand. So and that's why I was saying this. So the first one on my list sounds very harsh, kind of. I know it's harsh, but somehow like in this video, sometimes eh, we just have to face reality and stop talking um, and stop using Google words or using YouTube words. Sometimes we just have to face reality, forget about emotions. Forget about um this is sometimes we just have to be diplomatic and just face reality and face the thing that is really achievable. The first one really sound ash, but then I try as much as possible to be considered, but then that's just like so that's small bitter truth because it's better you know that bitter truth and dislike this video than when you get to you can be like ah assume me, assume me, assume me before you assume, assume now. So the first one on my list is leaving the child in your home country. So if you want to relocate that but and then you're thinking you actually know that child care is actually expensive number one method you can use in avoid paying child care is leaving your child in your own country or yeah in your own country and leaving your child is not just in a home country at least in a trusted uh, maybe like your mom your cousin your nephew somebody that you trust you know that when you actually give birth to your child you know how, how all these children are like maybe when you see your their auntie, their niece that come to greet them, please don't leave a girl child with a boy. You my hand no deal. Uh -huh. When they see their auntie, you know all those times, hey auntie, can you go uh -huh. So if you feel like you have a trusted family member, uh -huh, or your mother is still alive, you can actually leave um the child with them, or even your partner that you trust, you can actually leave the child with them. I know how difficult this can be, especially new mothers and everything. But the thing is, either you leave the child now. Or you leave the child later you still leave the child at one point of your life yes you still leave the child so even when the child is old enough in primary school this the child cannot be with you 24 7 not even 18 hours uh -huh. the child will be in school at a point they'll go to school they'll go to university they'll move on with their life last last you will still be alone i don't understand ash but then you know when so when you want to consider some step in life Sometimes you just have to propel it forward and just say, eh, okay, just use that one to console yourself. Do you understand what I'm trying to do? I'm just, just trying to use that one to just console ourselves. You know that, for example, if you go and greet somebody that um they lost their child in your but the way they actually used to console the mother is, what if they give, you give birth to the child and then the child now die after how many years, after spending money, you know, that type of word, you make her feel, ah, it's true, it's true that God knows better, you know, that kind of thing. So I am just saying, do you feel like you can't leave your child in your own country and no you have to be with your child and everything you can't be with your child forever whether that is you cannot be with your child forever. and even when you get to uk the only time even if you get to uk and you have money for that nanny or anything the only time you even get to spend with that child is i don't know maybe you just call doing the because something about uk is you are either working or you are working you are always working because you have to pay bills you have to, so the only time you even have time to spend with your child is maybe your one month paid leave or anything and that one month paid leave is what you can actually use to actually book a flight and come to nigeria or go to your own country to go and see your child because in uk that you you cannot be jobless you are either work you're working so even when you're working in uk the child is not going to be on your head the child is not even going to be with you and the first things are so you're going to be with somebody else or be in the school anything. but then i understand that at least you feel free you feel safe that your child is with you and that's what i'm trying to say that Yes, I understand. Even in real life, your child cannot be with you forever. At the point in time, they will be detached from you. You have to go like this. They have to go like this. Everybody will go and find 
from their side. So you have to really start learning that. I know it's not easy, especially for first time mom. I know it's not easy. And that's why I say, if you know you have somebody that you trust, your mother, you ain't, you can leave the child with them. Then another benefit of this is, because why I actually said this is because from what me I know, I don't know about another person. From what me I know, that me have noticed, people, the most successful people that me I know of, they're always very single people. Single girls, single boys, they're always very single people. This is not me saying married people, people with children are not successful. Do you understand? But you know what I'm trying to say? The most successful people that me I know, they're always very single people. And that's because when you're single, you don't have anything to think about. You just work as you like. You do anything as you like. You work so hard. And if, if you actually migrate outside the country without your child, without anything, you know, you, you, you'll be free to take any any amount of shifts that you like. You'll be able to do anything. You'll be able to also from your mind. You don't have anybody to think, hey, wait till my picking go shop or anything. Nothing like that. I hope you understand. I'm not saying... So if you see a married person or a successful married person, like somebody that is married, that is actually successful, that means the person really worked out, worked at... When they are single, it's somehow kind of difficult to become successful when you're married. That just be really true because any money you're earning is going to childcare, is going to marriage, is going to this. Just imagine somebody like me now. See, see the way I post videos. How many times in a week? If I get picky, I feel do that kind of thing. Sometimes I will tell you guys I sleep on the floor to make research and everything. If I have a child, if I have a family, I cannot even apply to video all those ones. So let's just at least. Sometimes let's try to embrace reality and be sincere with ourselves, right? So that's why I say if you have somebody that you trust, the other benefit of this is if I deal outside the country, even if it's hundred pounds that you send to them in, in, in Nigeria, hundred pounds if you convert, you know it's a whole lot of money. Than you spending that hundred pounds for that child in the UK. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? If you spend that hundred pounds for that child in the UK, it's not going to you that child is not going to know the value. I'm not saying your child is not appreciated, but you understand. What can 100 pounds get for you? Maybe like that 100 pounds is like maybe if the child stay with the nanny for like three hours or this thing. What can you use 100 pounds to get for the child? Nothing really. But if you send that 100 pounds to Nigeria or to your home country to actually take care of your child and even the person taking, even if it's 200 pounds, and I'm sure it's more than 200 pounds, 100 pounds, you know, that's a whole lot of money. Your child will even get all the benefit all the care everything that they deserve and this one will bring me to whoever you're bringing your child with should be somebody that is trusted for example like my mom now i know that when we're going up if you still give us money she said bring the money let me keep for you the one where it's much used to take money from us used to come out everybody parenting but the thing is when i grew up right when i when i was above 18 i started earning my money legally my mom stopped stealing from me she doesn't take money from me even when i was outside the country and then my food channel got monetized. I could not open an account then. So I was using an account to open, the, um, receive the money. So I used to feel like, oh, if they send out the money, she would do me like when I was young, she would take my money. So then the first money I cashed out on YouTube was $100. They sent it to her account. She went to the bank. And when they sent it to the I was like, hey, she would take my money now. She would come and say money of this thing. So basically, she helped me to withdraw the money from her account, her domiciliary account. She went to Sabo, Ausa, this black market, this thing. She went to change the money and she sent it to me in Naiva, my full money. I was surprised. She did not take one couple, not even money for transport, not even kinikon. In that day, I started respecting my mom. She did not take anything. So subsequently, when they sent me, when YouTube sent me money from that next time, when she wanted to change it, so I was not like, oh yeah, let her send me thirty k, let her take twenty k and everything. So if I tell her take this one, she will take it. Don't if I don't send, she will not. She will not even ask me. Even till now, my mom does not ask me for money. She doesn't ask anybody for money. That's because she's comfortable in her own. And even when. Her children were were more than 20 25 and things were not really going on she she was not pressuring us hey hey you have to give me something and uh, you see your mates she, she's not that type of person she will she, she's even the one giving for my hand if you give her she will take if you don't give her she will not ask you and that's why <laughs> she has pride let me just say she has pride and that's because she knows her words i don't know yeah she, so much she knows her words, and you would have noticed that type of thing on me with me on this channel she's not the type that we say because of money she has to do this that's how you will notice that even if you're going to give me money i'll sit here waiting in my mind i'll sit talk waiting in my mind that's exactly how my mom is you cannot use money to confuse her and that's why it's good to be independent she has her own money she's comfortable in her own way so she will never beg for your money she will never take your money she will never do anything so even if 
anything happens now and i say mom please let me keep this much we now that our model should we keep it you know that, that can waste more so they can see them now should we keep it like the ve i don't even know how to say it she, she's just like that so if you have somebody like my mom yes i'm proud of my mom like and that's what i'm saying because even me i was so bad because i've heard stories of so many mothers so many this and that you sent them money to do something and did not do it and everything so if you have somebody like my mom that even when you tell them keep this money for me the money will be kept they will not take anything they will not do anything even if they do not ask you for it my mom will never ask you for money but then you have to use your sense that okay you have to send that money as your mother and she will not use that opportunity to say this she has pride that's what I like about that. And that's why I mean, if I have pride, you put no me on this channel. No matter how much you have to pay me, I still tell you what's in there in my mind. I don't care about your money. And that's it. So you see that the thing is heavy, this true. So if you have somebody like my mom that you know that, regardless of how much that they send. So if somebody like me, if I was relocating abroad, I'll just give her my child. Let me take care and just be sending her money. I know that truly, truly, she's going to use that money for my child. She's not going to use my money to buy clothes, to buy this. My mom loves to look good though. But she knows when to use money to do, you know, when to do this thing. <laughs> so it's not that type of person. I know I can trust her with my child. She'll use the money to do what I used to say she should do. So if you know you have somebody like that, that they are not they are not money confessions. Like when you send them money, if you say pay my child school fees, they'll pay your child school fees, buy pampas for my child, they'll buy pampas. And then of course, <laughs> those type of people, you can actually leave your child. It cannot, it might not be your, it might not be your mother because we have some mothers that they are not like my own mother like those ones anywhere they see your money they'll just take it we have some mothers like that it's not an insult it's not anything people just have different um personality people just have different but so it could be your niece it could be your nephew it could be your cousin it could be anything it could be anybody sha, that you feel like when you give them something you, you used to get value for your money it could even be your husband you tell your husband please let me keep this they, they, and they will do the money for perfect way so anybody that you feel like you can trust you can only leave the child with them so that when you go to uk when you get to uk or you go to outside the country anywhere you will hustle from your mind like you will do that jamma jamma and everything and before you know it even in six months you can come back and pick your child that way you would have settled your mind you would have balanced you would have everything because it's not easy it's traveling abroad and struggling with child i understand that people say they move abroad with child they yes even when you move abroad with child you will get to vibe but guy it's not easy and that's it's not easy the way you can survive this as is not the way this child can survive so if you know you if you know you have somebody that you trust that they cannot mishandle your money somebody that you trust though that they cannot mishandle your money and they will take care of that child truly truly and you'll be seeing it hey you can go abroad go and also even if it's hundred dollars you're sending them per month or even two hundred dollars per month is a whole lot of money in nigeria in fact as it stands in nigeria if somebody give you 5k Five thousand naira. The person will thank you from now to the next year. Five thousand naira. So imagine that. Though we have some family members that is not appreciative. We are, that's why I said depending on the family. <laughs> I remember the day I gave my money. Um, how much? I mean, my brother. They wanted to use time. I was like, how much kilo? You know, you understand that. But people that are appreciated that they will not see it like. Mm -hmm. So you can leave it with them. But then, if you feel like you don't have anybody, you can't leave it with them. Even me. That's why that I know my mom is trustworthy. If I have a child, can I? Would I be able to leave the child with my mom? I, I am not sure because you know there is this connection between mother and child, and everything. I might not be able. But sometimes you just have to think of the long run because this you going outside the country is not really for you. You are doing it for your child. You are doing it for the future of your child. So for you to really care for that child and for them to get the best um the best um of the best and then depending on where you're leaving the child for example in nigeria if you're leaving your child in lagos please carry your child and go carry your child and go but if you are leaving your child in a place like ibadan like ocean state like in those state like all, all those cool cities in nigeria you can leave your child so depending on where you're leaving your child and then depending on because lagos <laughs> this I, I don't know that's why i said everybody has different scenario before you left depending on the scenario in your environment depending maybe your house even lagos we have some peaceful place in lagos that they don't used to do maybe like ikeja yeah ikeja is still there's some part of ikeja that is still peaceful if you know your house to that person's school the person's house to your child's school is not far in ikeja you can still leave the child with them so that's why i said depending on so many factors if you know that Leaving your child in Nigeria or in your home country is going to put a strain on their effect or anything. 
take your child and no but then if you know that they have we have so many good schools in nigeria let's be sincere let's be sincere at least we we all finished from nigeria and i don't mean the english way they speak it's not from nigeria we're using our certificate to travel out is it with Nigeria that we're using our certificate to travel out? We have very good schools. So if you feel like you can actually afford the good school, then you'll be sending them money. So then when you're actually balanced and you've also you've taken your time to also you don't you know sometimes even when you're at work, you think of ah waiting your child go chop or waiting. You know that you as a person, when you're working as a single person, you can eat burger, you can eat cake and gala, you can eat anything. You are on the move, but then you see these children, you can't feed them anything you see. You can't be feeding them gala and boga. The uncle mama will be puff puff on it. You understand? But as a single person, you can just do anything. You can sign up to cook for one week. You can just be eating indomie. But this child cannot be giving them all this um you know. You understand? But then depending on if, if your child is actually a sickler, maybe SS. You might actually consider moving them outside the country because of course they will get good medical um this thing uh, but then you who could pay for it no depending on the visa route you are going through if you are going through student visa you pay for it but if you are going through work visa uh, healthcare work visa you will not pay for it and you know consider if you're going with student visa for example now you have to pay isl surcharge of 705 for yourself and then for the child so if you can collect so that's 705 pounds do you know how much it is so depending if your child has medical condition you can travel with them obviously but if they don't have any medical condition that the normal child everything is fine they'll just say mommy i miss you mommy i miss you finish leave them with somebody that you trust in nigeria and then work very hard outside the country and be sending them money yeah and aside that you know that when you're leaving from the country your, your child have started their life and see the thing is i don't know i don't know but the thing is average child in nigeria is very sharp very very sharp aside uk there are some countries that you actually relocate your child to and then your your child social life eh, it go get us in the yes they have so many social life outside the country i understand that but then sometimes even when you enroll your child in the school abroad they might be mixing with this white you know because of the you know all these white children sometimes their mother will tell them if you see any black in your school don't talk to them bully them and everything all those things can really um affect the mental a bit the social well-being of a child you understand that it can do so many things i know that Moving outside the country, right? They have so many nonsense, nonsense culture that we, we don't accept here. Maybe like all these gay, maybe lesbians, they have so many culture that we don't accept here. So imagine in a school that they don't have issue with lesbianism, with gay and everything. You're enrolling your child there. I know Nigeria is not the perfect place, but sometimes we, we might just have to take our time to just think, it's okay if your child is going for university education, at least that one, they are 18 years old, they can decide to choose any life that they want. But then when your child is actually small, they are still little, like they cannot really think on their own. And then the, the atmosphere you're putting them, the environment you're putting them is people that um, are violent, people that um, you know they don't used to beat child abroad. Sure, you know that you can't really do something in school. Your teacher will just shout at you. I don't do that. This thing. But you know in Nigeria, if you do something, why you right? You will never in your life try it again. But abroad, they just used to use mouth. So sometimes you might actually want to consider all those things into factor. The type of child you actually want to raise for yourself. You are you cannot train your. They say that you can't train your child alone. So you, the thing is, you can't train your child alone. And the the adjama come up on you. Train the child. The community will train the child. Church will train the child. Um, anywhere that they find share, everybody contributes to training a child. You can't train a child alone. So it's one of those factors that you might really want to consider because at least Nigeria. I, is 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 still we still have value we still have culture we still have things to respect and because of the social life there's no how if a child is in nigeria no matter how dumb you're trying to play there's no how you have mouth open because 90 percent of children in nigeria in fact 99.9 they are very outspoken they, and that's why when nigerians move outside the country you see the way they succeed the way, the way they start making waves and everything because nine times of, of time we are very outspoken that one is just like a genetic um this thing. so there are some of these factors you might want to consider it's nigeria or any of your country might not be conducive for you as an adult but for that time it might be conducive for your child at least let, let them just gain experience i don't know if i would take talk or maybe not experience or let them just have that ot that common sense say this thing or anything <laughs> understand 
I don't know, Shall I just depend it, depending on your average, like depending on what you think, depending on what you think. So the next on my list is um traveling with a responsible partner. The way I said responsible partner is not about just traveling, you know, whether you're going on work visa, whether you're going on study visa, you have ability or you can actually travel with your dependent and yeah, dependent, which is your husband or your wife. Please, if you're traveling, make sure your uh, partner is very responsible. If you have a partner that in Nigeria, he doesn't give any help about your child, he doesn't do anything, my dear. When you get outside the country, he is not going to change. So you see that type of thing, there's no point traveling with your partner. <laughs> he is not going to change. So even if you want to travel with your husband, you want to travel with your partner, make sure it's somebody that have common sense. Somebody that you believe in that child with. When you go out, right? Maybe you want to go to the market. You say, ah, daddy, busy, and they come. And he will take care of the child. He will change pampas for the child. He will bait for the child. He will cook for the child. He will do all those things you used to do. All that you will leave the child with the father. And you will smell very well. You know that, yes, so. It's the, you know, there are so many men that you cannot leave the child with them. Hmm? So if you know that your husband is very responsible. Uh -huh, that's very, very responsible. That's when you say, ah, that's the busy, that's the baller, more fair, have a daughter, you want to go to the market, and you leave the child with him, and he took proper care of the child, as if you are ever around, do all those basic things for the child. Mm -hmm. God, I've heard people do it. You can actually travel with your partner, with him, outside the country. So the way you do it is, so whether you are the one on student visa, or you are the one on work visa, any of it, the thing is, you, you guys will be running shift work. Maybe you work in the morning, you work in the afternoon, you work in the uh tv days or four days or five days or kind of thing and another thing is depending on who is liable for that depending on who the applicant is for example if the wife is actually traveling abroad as um she was employed she was given certificate of sponsorship as a worker abroad right so you know that she's the work she's the main applicant so our own work can can mostly not be flexible Though we have some organization that when you talk to that you have a child and everything, they try to understand. But sometimes, so it's the dependent that will be flexible for the main applicant. Do you understand that? So let's say I am I actually got a job outside the country to come and work maybe as a caregiver. And then when I get to the company and they say I have to work every day, maybe from morning to afternoon and everything. And then I talk to my husband that I have to work from morning to night too. From morning to afternoon, so that means you have to work at night. And then the husband is like, Me, I can't work at night though, it's money that I want. And then you try to look for a job, and, and the husband is say, No, me, I cannot wait night. Me, that I'm supposed to be sleeping at night. I cannot work at night though, it's money that I want. You see that type of scenario is not going to work because without the main applicant fulfilling our own part of the deal, our own part of the agreement as a worker in the organization, your both of you visa is going to be invalid so the thing is that's why i said before you travel out with your dependent make sure it's somebody that have common sense have a random discussion um most that you might not know your shift though before you travel and everything so the, regardless of the shift where they give you him you him or she will be running opposite shift you guys understand what i'm trying so if you get to uk and then the person that employed you said you have to do morning and afternoon then when you get home your husband has to do night so that when you finish your morning and afternoon, right? When you come home, you'll be with the child. Then the husband, your husband will go for his own night. Then he will come in the morning. That's when you, you will now go out. It's going to be on. So when you're moving, that's why I said very responsible partner. Understanding and communication is one, just those two words that has to come in place. Two words that has to come in place. Because if your partner is not responsible, if he's not, if he's not understanding, she might say, hey, don't even bother leaving the night. Just, just stay where you are because last night they will cancel your visa and you'll be back home because there's no how you can actually combine it. So your other partner that is actually the dependent asks to be the flexible one. You, you cannot, you cannot be flexible with your own time because you signed an agreement and it was because of that visa that made you to come from outside your country. So there's no how. You can be flexible with your own visa, um, with your own work, but then you're dependent that it doesn't have any contract, it doesn't have anything. 
has to be the flexible one so whether the main applicant is actually a study vi student visa let's say for example your class runs from 9 a.m to 2 p.m it's still the same thing then when you come back from school your husband will now go maybe from 3 p.m overnight to go and work then he will come back in the morning then you will go to school you'll not be doing opposite so you see all this explanation that i give where is the time to rest where is the time to this and that's why i said if you know you have somebody in your home country, you can actually leave the child for them. So that it's easy for the both of you. Even if the wife goes from, from morning and afternoon shift, she go, the husband who can go for morning and afternoon. Then at night, everybody will come back and come and rest. Then in the morning, you go. Then you start doing normal shifts, like normal Nigerian shifts. You know, Nigerian shifts will go aside nurses. So you go in the morning, come back in the after, uh, afternoon. I hope you understand, but then because the child is involved, you have little to no time. The time you just see yourself, you can just see yourself at like one hour difference when she's coming, when she aside, maybe when they have shift or any other thing like that. So, that's one of So, the other one on our list is family members. So, instead of leaving your child with the family member I talked about, if you feel like you don't trust them or anything, then you can actually travel outside the country with your family members but then you know this one is going to cost a whole lot of money so you can travel with your mom with your da da niece with your nephew with your anybody or okay with your nephew with your any family member that you feel like they can trust you can trust your child with you can travel with them but then <clears throat> i hope you know they can actually come with you on a dependent visa so you have to get a separate visa for them either a family visa or a, to a tourist visa or a student visa. visa student visa visa Yes, or maybe they get their own work. <laughs> yeah, either a tourist visa, yeah, a tourist visa or a family reunion visa. That's the only way they can come. So you have to spend for that one. So that one might actually be a better one for you. So um, this um, the tourist visa. I'll, I'll click the link in my description box about UK. Share. So this tourist visa, right? When they actually get it, then the first six, they can only come for six months, right? The tourist visa, the first time you apply, they will give you just six months. After six months, you come back to Nigeria. You apply again, they will give you one year. After one year, you come back to Nigeria again, they will give you this thing. Like that, you just be changing like that. It's not permanent straight. You have to be coming to Nigeria every six months or one year or anything like that. So I have another video that is coming up, how to relocate with family members. Yeah? So I'm making more explicit video on that. So the next on our list is nanny. So you can decide to actually hire a nanny from Nigeria to UK to take care of your child, to actually take care of your kid. So there's something like a nanny visa, but not really nanny visa. They call it domestic help visa. So this visa as well somehow similar to the visit or tourist visa I talked about because this one they will issue it for just six months. And even at that, they have so many conditions you have to fulfill. Like the the nanny has to have his or own separate room. You have to pay this this amount of money to her. I'll make it under separate video on that. Make sure you stay subscribed on this channel. Like all those normal, you know, outside the country, there is nothing like. Um, that work they value all their workers especially all these social care worker all these home care worker they value them so much so if you're a type that used to match with your nanny in nigeria or any country my dear don't try it in uk and there's an entire that says if a nanny finds out that the ogre is actually um maltreating them they should actually report them to the you know you not even want to try it yet. so that one they'll actually issue when you actually apply for it they'll give you like a six month visa you spend six months in uk you come back, you reapply again, you go again. I think you have to do it for two or three times before they will not give you a longer stay. Yeah, I think so. Stay so careful for this channel, Sha. So the next one at least is partnership. So sometimes maybe when you get to UK, when you get to any of this country that you are going to, you can have, for example, if you are in a black community where there, there are a whole lot of people, maybe you have a neighbor that is a black person. Even we used to do it when we were going on, our mother would live my mother did not really leave us with neighbor. But she did, Sha like she did then we had people in second class so if she's going out or anything she was ah eh, wah, wah, boo, you know, she'll go out she'll come if that woman too is going out she'll say ah come and look after your children she'll bring her children to our house you know that those times we'll play 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 and everything so if you have a neighbor right that a black community you know, the person is from nigeria is from ghana and everything and you feel like maybe she works in the morning you work at night you can be flexing it like that right so you guys can talk together so when she's going to work in the morning you can take care of your child when she comes back and you want to go at night you give her your child so you will do trade by butter that way you are not spending money you are not spending 
anything so but then you know that you can't have this in mind before traveling because you don't know how people can be you can actually take good care of a person's child whereas the person will not take good care of your child you know it happens so you really cannot know depending on the witchcraft that is inside the person so this one is if you see it by chance if it happens by chance because it's not the same way you will treat your child treat another person the same way and that person will treat your child you understand that and um, but then and then there is another risk to this because when you are doing this and then maybe the person that your neighbor does not treat their own child well, but, but does not treat your own child well, and then they should share the issue. this way fair people they get to find out you know what that means they're going to take that child away from you so i'm sure you don't want to risk that they don't leave our own child because it's you come on my come on you know some of this child can be annoyed and you know that we all have different ways that we train our child right maybe me i have trained my child you if you move from this place and she maybe i want to like and different mother they have different level of tolerance you know our body don't beat so maybe your own child did something to make the neighbor angry and she was so angry she now pinched the child <laughs> if you pinch a child last time, just know that just be telling your child oh they're going to take that child away from you so and nobody wants to hear that in fact you cannot even tell uk government said that is somebody that pinched child they were saying it's because you don't know how to take care of your child so we we'll help you to train the child so the next on my list is church care group so this um church care group like there are so many churches redeem this one that one depending on the church you're going they try to like organize like a mini i don't know maybe like a community around them like if you have people that live around people that live around more like people that live around child they can take care of your child or like a nanny this single i don't know how they do it though i don't know so depending on your church when you get to your church ask them if they have um anything like that organized nanny group so i think it's the church that is actually paying them for that period of time or maybe they will subsidize the money for you or anything or the church actually i don't know there's a way they shall do it i know there's a church community this one like that so another one on my list is that's on a Into group okay then another one another one on my list is okay that's all so guys that will bring us to the end of today's video if you like and enjoy it make sure to leave in the comment section subscribe to my youtube channel if you have any doubts make sure to ask in the comment section thank you so much for watching today's video and of course i'll see my next video okay, okay. thanks for watching bye see you soon Hey, gay, 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 Hi guys, welcome back again to another video. I don't know which video I should say.